Hello, my name is Bhavna Sahu. I'm, I'm a junior application scientist in Rasa Life Science Informatics. And I will be talking on the Python and BioPython as I'm the trainer in Rasa Life Science for Python and BioPython. In this session, in this demo session, I'm going to talk a little bit upon the Python, that is the introduction part, the Python programming, why we have chosen Python language over other languages and why we want to use BioPython. First of all, coming to the Python syllabus, what are topics we are going to cover in Python? Let's have a review on that. I mean to say, when I will start with the Python, Python, we will be talking on the introduction of Python, the history of Python, why we are choosing Python, where to use it, the difference between the Python 2 and the Python 3. Okay, we do have advantages and the features of Python, I'm going to talk on that. Now, coming to the second module where I will be talking on the data types, why we want to why we want data types? What is the use of it? Actually, data types and the introduction, core structure elements, loop, conditions, comprehensions, functions, modules, then OOP, that is the object-oriented programming. These are all the basics of Python. This makes the concept of Python to implement anywhere in any domain. As I'm talking about domains, it can be, uh, life science domain, it can be banking domain, it can be IT domain, anywhere. Okay, and why we have chosen Python over other languages? It is quite easy to understand. Okay, now, now if I talk about the data types, we do have string, numbers, list, tuple, dictionaries, set, all these data types to cover. It does have their methods, it does have their uses. And why we are using this data types? So we are going to cover these topics under the session. I mean to say in the training session. And coming to the next part, that is the comment and the operators. If I'm talking about the comment and the operators, so what are operators we are going to see? And we are going to uh, implement how we are going to implement in our studies. I mean to say whenever we are planning to analyze a data, it can be any data. So when I talk about the BioPython, so we will be talking again and we will be implementing all these methods in the life science data. I mean to say the biological data which has nucleotide, nucleoside and the protein sequences. What are methods we are going to use? And what exactly is the use of the Python concept and the BioPython, how it is linked? I will be talking on the conditions, what are conditions we will be using and what is the use of conditions in our analysis? Iterations, why do we need iterations? Whenever I say iterations, it means loop. Again, next will be the functions, comprehensions, modules. When I talk about the modules, again, if I say BioPython, Python, okay? So Python has built-in modules, which is called as built-in libraries. BioPython, again, it is a package and which has different, different modules. I will be talking about the object-oriented programming, which is very important in the basics of Python. Coming to the next point, that is the file handling. That topic covers how we can import and export different types of file format, how we can read it, how we can modify it, how we can append it, so how we can write it. I mean to say the output files, how we, how we can save the output files in different formats. Okay, now next is like BioPython, I will be talking on BioPython and, and the different databases. I mean to say, whenever I'm using BLAST, as we all know, NCBI, NCBI has BLAST tool, where we can use nucleotide BLAST, protein BLAST, and so on. How we are going to proceed with the alignment? 
against the databases, how we are going to search the sequences against the databases. And we are going to check the identity and the coverage using this BLAST over BioPython. I mean to say, we will be using this programming language to analyze our results. We do have different methods like transcription, translation, which we have already seen and which we have already done in, in the theoretical part. We are going to, since I will be talking on the sequence annotation. When I say sequence annotation, so BioPython has different, different modules, which are BLAST, SwissProt, PDB, UniProt, sequence input, output, it means in the sequence annotation, we are going to see the standard formats of all this gene bank, gene bank file format, Stockholm file format, PDB file format, and the FASTA file format. And I'm going to talk on the sequence records. So when I say sequence records, it has different types. I mean to say annotations, features, origin, description, name, and so on. Next is the parsing where I'm going to tell about how we can actually read the sequence file format. We will be downloading the BLAST. We will be downloading the database, view databases in online and, and after that, after downloading, we are going to use all these tools offline. So this is just the normal and the uh, overview of the blast syllabus all right now let me talk about little let me talk little bit about the python and the history of it so in when i, I when i say python introduction why we want to go for the python so it is again a very high level where we are going to interpret our results and it is very interactive python whenever coming to the command or the scripting of file, it is quite easy. It is readable. When, if I compare with the C, C++, Java, and BioPerl, Ruby, this is quite difficult to read. You can just, means how you write in, in English, okay, with grammars. Likewise, we do have Python, which is it, which is quite easy and readable, it's highly readable. So again, it uses English keywords, which frequently means again, which are uh, used by other languages also, but in Python, it is quite easy. We are going to see the advantages of Python. Okay, now when I say the advantages of Python, now Python is, in, is interpreted, it does not take much time to proceed or to execute any result. It is quite interactive. When I say interactive, it again, uh, with the interactive shell, we can get immediate results. And it is easy for us to um, analyze the results. I mean to say, after writing our commands, still getting our results. It is again, object oriented. Okay, which encapsulates the code within the objects. So we will be having a detailed studies on the object oriented. So if you are a beginner, it is quite an easy language to understand. Next, coming to the characteristics part, again, it supports the functional and the structured programming methods. Structure, if I say structured, you can design it and you can actually implement your ideas. You can design your ideas accordingly. And when I say you can write your codes, it is quite easy. So it, you can also analyze your big time data into it very easily. It, it actually provides very high level dynamic data types. Okay, it does have, Python has built-in libraries, which is quite big, and you can also practice it using built-in libraries. These are all the advantages and the characteristics of Python. 
it is efficient you don't have to it, it does not need any compilation you don't have to type declarations when i say declarations it we we usually use string types or we usually use text type or the numbers in other programming languages we need to declare the variables but here in python we don't need it it has automated garbage collection okay when i say garbage collection again it is somewhere related to the deleted items it is extendable and customizable easy debugging techniques when i talk about the debugging it means the errors it is easy to you know you know fix the errors it is quite helpful python has given that feature so we do have different editors or i can see idles which are available for this programming the applications of the python it is quite easy to learn okay we can we can read it easily it is easy to maintain okay you hardly get very um, error i mean to say errors are quite fixable we can debug it we can use a uh, broad standard libraries as i said earlier that it is compatible to unix windows linux to mac all this operating systems interactive mode as i talk about the interactive cell the python has support for all this interactive modes we do have different different interactive modes that is called as ides that is anaconda pycharm then thony and eclipse and so on so python supports all this ides biopython when i talk about biopython bio biopython again this is the largest and most popular bioinformatics package for python why do we want to use biopython now again in life science coming to the life science we do have huge databases and we do have huge data to analyze and implement our analysis we can actually approach different ideas and um, apply different ideas on this So when I talk about biopython in, in coming to the bioinformatics part, it is again the combination of the mathematics, or I can say statistics, or the programming language, or the programming, um, or I mean to say software tools and our um, biological data, which includes DNA, RNA, and the protein sequences. We can use different methods for. for this i mean to say if i give one example we do have transcription translations reverse complement means reverse complement all this methods we are going to find into this we we are going to see different types of um, file formats how to read it how to parse it we are going to see the sequence annotation of all this file formats we can also use different bioinformatics tools such as ncbi blast 10 entries and uh, then alignment using blast okay all these tools we can use it on the interfaces i mean to say biopython interfaces we just need to download that and we can start using this what are the features of the biopython it is again easy to interpret or analyze interactive and again object oriented we can it supports faster file format pdb gene bank scope and then uh, pfam that is uh, stockholm file formats and so on it is again readable which supports the sequence formats we can also read each line of of all this file formats so again bio sql it this is another uh, programming language i mean to say a package in a different programming language so somewhere um 
BioSQL, that is the standard set of SQL tables. As I say SQL tables, so it is again associated with the database, which is called as NCBI, which uses this SQL tables for storing the sequences. So we can also use all this BioSQL um, codes or somewhere the part of the BioSQL where they have means example NCBI, NCBI uses this. So it is BioPython is quite accessible or it is quite linked. Uh, we can quite link to the BioSQL tables and BioPython, the Python, uh, this module, which actually uh, reads the BioSQL tables too. Coming to the advantages part. So, um, it provides a microarray data type using clustering. So again, in the NCBI, uh, Uniprot, all these databases, we are going to find the clusters of, of biological data. Again, depends on the requirement. So we can use clustering also. And where it is useful, clustering tree view uh, type files, it means we can actually implement our ideas and it is quite easy to understand and we can implement our ideas for, for the phylogenetics stream. So we are going to see the PDB parsing, representation and analysis. It again supports the data used in Medline applications. In, and again, we can see the standard databases of the um, actually in the bioinformatics project. So clear documentation has been provided, okay, like in a cookbook style, we are going to provide uh, the study material for the bioinformatics, sorry, the bioinformatics, as well as, which is again bioinformatics, again associated with the biopython. The mainly will be the biopython, how codes to be written. So this is about the advantages. As we have, uh, as I told you, we do have a very good and very uh, reviewed as well as very um, sorted syllabus where we are going to target mainly on the data sets of the of, of bi biological data or the biological science. I mean to say the DNA, RNA, and the protein sequences or related to it. So this is a quick demo of Python and BioPython. Okay, hope you are going to like it. And um, if you are liking it, please, please join Rasa Life Science Informatics. Thank you so much.